Hey everyone, so a while ago I did a reaction video to the Ancient Violin Restoration which was published by Masters of the Craft and uh, I literally tore it to pieces. No, 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 don't go for the tight bond, no! It's, ooh, <laughs> it just doesn't fit, even the sides don't fit. Oh wow, yeah, no, that's, that's terrible and the way he's just sanding is really scary. You could tell even by the tools they were putting out and things like that that this was no professional violin maker. I'm doing a violin restoration and I've just got to get my tools ready. Now Masters of the Craft have just come back again with another video called Broken 1840s Violin Restoration. So I'm going to take a look at that video and review how authentic the work in that video is. Okay, so uh, I'm just watching the videos, so um, let's get right into it. So it's definitely an older violin, could be 1840s. Uh, but I can't exactly tell where the violin is made. The first thing he does is fits a soundpost patch. To me, it looks like they've already fit patches on the where the blocks, the top and bottom blocks are. So they've already fitted some patches there and they're currently doing the soundpost patch. That's done in a fairly standard way. I would probably have some, uh, put some guides in to, to, so that the soundpost patch goes in the same way every time. You can be, have a much more accurate fit. But that's definitely the correct way to do a soundpost patch. So it's much better, done much better. Also, looking around the workshop, you know, anytime I see pictures of the workshop, there are the correct kind of tools. They've got some of the FIO gouges. I think they're a Swiss company. And it's great to see that he's using a counter mold on the other side of this soundpost patch repair. I use counter molds in a lot of my repairs. So it looks quite authentic. Uh, the start looks quite authentic. The instrument really is in quite a need of repair. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how we go as we go along. Okay. Interesting way of fitting the uh, soundpost patch using a like a sandpaper file that he made himself. The soundpost plays a pivotal role in this restoration. It's the bridge that carries the vibrations from the strings to the heart of the violin. Mm. The narrator doesn't know how to use, uh, like doesn't know all the words correctly, but uh, it's calling the sound post a bridge. Ensuring <laughs> all oh, well, I guess it's a bridge. Sealed. A wood-based glue is used to heal them. He's got some of the same clamps as me there. So he's got these clamps here, which are the clamps from Dictum, a German company that also has a branch in America. So that's all looking pretty good. He's also replaced, they've also replaced the top lock, I can see. That's actually a really beautiful back on that violin. I think, could it be French? Might be French, I'll, I'll have to have a bit more of a look, but it's, uh, it's cut on the slab, it's done really beautifully. I love how the cat just walks through the picture, it's kind of cute. He's rubbing glue on the end grain very good because the end grain sucks up the glue. So if you glued end grain without first put, laying down a few layers of glue to allow the glue to soak into the wood, the top plate just wouldn't stay on. Yeah, he's doing a beautiful job preparing the neck block as well. He's using all the right tools, so that's great. Here, the luthier meticulously fits the fingerboard to the neck, breathing life back into the violin. The narrator is just <laughs> a bit annoying. Here, the luthier fits a fingerboard back on the neck, breathing life into the violin. I'm sorry, guys, but the fingerboard does not breathe life into the <laughs> instrument. <laughs> but he did a great job measuring out, you know, making sure that the mancha, which is the proportion, that like the proportions are right, like I could see he's doing everything properly. 
So here he is using the Ibex plane, the little thumb plane. They're really good American planes. Uh, again, you know, everything's done the right way. So to me, it looks like he's done a top block replacement. He's repaired the soundpost crack. He's done at the top block uh, on the top plate. He's doubled the edges where the top block is and where the bottom block is. Now, to me, it looks like there's a lot of cleats there that are old, so they're previous repairs, and he didn't worry about repairing those because they were probably still holding. And then often it's the, the cost to the client as well. So to me, it looks like it could be a client's instrument. So, you know, you don't always have all the freedom to do all the repairs. So it's had previous cracks restored on the ribs, uh, on the top plate, and it's had one crack on the back. Luckily, it didn't have a soundpost crack on the back. That's not so good. With reverence and care, the front plate is reunited with the body. Okay, so then he glues up the instrument. He seems to be doing everything correctly there. I uh, love the clamps. I prefer using the clamps that kind of that are a bit quicker to put on. They're the ones that I literally made when I started violin making. That's these ones here. They're currently on a violin that I've just repaired. Bit of an emergency as well. But yeah, so I, I prefer using those clamps. I did have to use some of my the other clamps on the top because I'm using my other clamps on a different repair. It's been a busy time here. It's a bit unusual doing the mortise of the neck once the top's been glued on, but, but you know, it works. And it looks like he's doing a neat job. Uh, it's unusual that he is filing the neck down. So it's possible that the neck was actually too thick. It looks like the instrument has had a neck graft at some point in its life and he's extending the heel of the neck. But even working back the heel of the neck, um, I kind of would have, because it's quite long, I probably would have cut that back first and I would have done the rest of the work on the instrument. But, you know, again, like once the neck had been fitted to the instrument. But again, like, you know, that's just a difference in opinion. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's not good workmanship. Oh yes, I can see that the neck is actually pretty thick. So he's probably just thicknessing it down to the correct dimensions. Because if a neck is too thick, it can be very difficult to play, but then there can be necks that are too thin as well. So here he is cutting back where he filled out the mortise and I can see he's doing a very careful job not to damage the original work. So he's doing a great job there because it's like the original part of the instrument is kind of sacred. Yeah, okay, so then he gets, uh, he sort of gets to fitting the neck like he's cutting out the mortise for the neck first. And it looks like he is doing the bridge next. I think it could be a French violin. Also, looking at the inside of the instrument, it looks quite French. Hey, that's interesting. I love how he puts on the bridge with the rubber band. That's kind of cool. Because he uses that, he's going to use that to line the neck. That's actually quite clever. I've never done that. Uh, I kind of do it very differently. Um, yeah, that's that's interesting. Nice, you learn something new every day. You can see that he's also filled out the bottom of the instrument, the timber on the bottom of the instrument. And it looks to me like he has actually just cut into the original wood just a tiny bit there. Here he's fitting the neck and it's kind of unusual that he has fully shaped the neck already. I tend to shape it afterwards, but again, uh, you know, everyone's different. So I'll just give it the rough shape and then I'll do the rest afterwards. But, uh, but you know, again, it looks like he's doing a good job. They show very little of the neck fitting at uh, one minute. He's fitting it, next minute it fits.
The neck, a crucial milestone, is fitted. Also generally great to see he's using the proper hide glue. He's got the hot pot of glue in the background and they show him using it uh, over time. So that's fantastic. He's doing a button crown. That's quite common as well when the button at the uh, top of the back there isn't big enough. Uh, you just put a little strip of ebony over the top. Yeah, so he's fitting that here. Then at 15 he's actually gluing it on. A beautiful ebony crown is fitted to the button. Again, that's quite normal. He's also fitting in little bits at 15, 36. He's fitting little bits where the ribs, um, because the ribs were too short uh, at the bottom, at the top block, so he kind of made some ribs at the same time. And then he's fitting a giant block of, what the hell? Oh, right, no, he's not. <laughs> okay. He's cutting it back for the saddle. He's using the correct glue to glue on the saddle. But geez, that's a big block of wood just to, to clamp to the bottom of the instrument. I mean, that all needs to be cut back. And same with the block at the top, at the top block there, the ribs. He's, you know, he's finished cutting the neck and now he's got to cut back this, the side. So it's a, it's a, a lot of work and, and, you know, he leaves a bit of, you can see he leaves a bit of marks on the neck. But again, you know, like there's just a difference in opinion, different way of doing it. You know, like you, I, I try and really minimize the risk of, uh, of damaging other parts of the instrument. He's doing a great jo job in shaping the neck. That looks really professional using the sandpaper. So it looks to me like he's wetting Oh no, he's dyeing the neck. Sort of an orangey colour. That's quite nice. Mm, using a fan. Here we go, he's doing some retouching. Oh. Alright, he's just putting a bit of varnish on a cloth and rubbing it onto the neck. That looks really nice, doesn't it? That's working fine. Now the saddle, um, that's a lot of timber to work down. I try to do the work on the timber before it's on the instrument, just again to reduce the risk to the instrument. But again, difference in opinion, he's doing a good job, so he's not really damaging anything. So that's just, you know, I do things slightly different. Doing a beautiful job on, uh, on the nut. Finishing the fingerboard. Interesting how he's rubbing varnish onto the instrument rather than painting it on. Is that? Or maybe he's just what, uh, cleaning it. I think he's just cleaning it. Yeah. That's a nice spruce here. There we go. Beautiful. Same kind of thing I would do, it's very authentic. Scraping back that little uh, area on the ribs there. That's an interesting one. It'll be an interesting one to get to look uh, invisible. A touch of varnish enhances not only the violin's appearance, but also its resonance. What? A touch of varnish enhances its resonance? <laughs> I love the narrator. Okay, so he's taken a lot of the varnish off on the hand patch. There must have been a lot of wearing there. Or maybe he did some kind of repair. He's using the Windsor Newton retouching colours, I think. I don't know, they look a bit different. I don't know. Might be a different colour. He's retouching like the little... Make it look like the cracks continue on, you know, so the... Uh, Oh, I love the way he's drawn the grain. That's that's beautiful. Retouching is a real art, and uh, this guy knows what he's doing. 
it's a, it's a slightly opaque color he's using there that's interesting you can see he's really getting close now to, to finishing it put a bit of cover varnish over the top oh no it's varnish it's As color varnish deeper into the restoration you'll notice the interplay of woods that define this violin the body <laughs> from I love how the cat just walks past. My cat used to sleep in the violin cases. I had to close them at night <laughs> in case someone had al allergies. And maple. The darker, noble ebony used for the fingerboard contrasts beautifully. The pegs carved from boxwood provide both function and form. Oh, he's got the beautiful old boxwood pegs. That is stunning. I'm pretty sure they're French, but they're really beautiful. That one's actually the first of G pegs actually got some bite marks, I think. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen pegs like that. They're just lovely. Those pegs are really old. It's great that he's reusing, reusing them. <laughs> Love that little bit of strip light that he's putting inside the instrument. That's quite clever. I'll probably use... Yeah, no, that's actually really clever. I love it. There's a little party going on inside the instrument. That's gorgeous. But that's all, like, everything he's doing there is really authentic, you know. Fitting the bridge, fitting the pegs, tail guard, tail piece. I don't quite know why they're showing the strings going on. All oh, right, yes, yes, okay. He's putting the strings on to determine the string height. I very seldom do that. I've, I've become pretty accurate with the string heights, but uh, yeah, then he's just finishing off the bridge. Uh, that's a very English way of doing things, uh, but it works beautifully well. I wouldn't file my bridges. I would always um, just carve them fully. Wow, he's doing pumice. That's lovely. Yeah, I don't quite. I just use fine sandpaper at the end. The luthier adjusts the fingerboard and introduces a new saddle and top nut, preparing this instrument for the music yet to come. I'm just looking at the instrument in the mostly completed state, and and to me, I try and finish it a little bit nicer, but uh, but it's looking. Um, you know, everything has been repaired very authentically. Let me see here. Oh, yeah, no, he's doing a bit of polishing at the end. Yeah, I don't use the wax polish so much. A lot of makers do. I know there can be disagreement about the French polishing and wax polishing, but I think on some instruments, yeah, it's nicely done, though. Like, the whole restoration is beautifully done. Yeah, so here he compares the before and after. You can clearly see the difference. Uh, it looks very beautiful. I do sometimes add a tiny bit of varnish, depending on the kind of instruments. There's some instruments I would not add varnish to, some of the Italian ones, um, some of the really high-level Italian instruments. But I, I, I'm also quite conscious of protecting an instrument for a player uh, because a player adds a lot of wear and tear to the instrument so I will sometimes put a form of cover varnish on some areas to protect them and and to actually preserve the original varnish underneath that. I know a lot of people aren't, uh, aren't huge fans of covering origi uh, original varnish but it, depending on, on the kind of value of the instrument you do need to try and protect the original varnish as much as possible. Okay, so yes, so here they play the instrument. <laughs> I love how they're playing like a Celtic sort of a traditional piece. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, it it um, it has a sort of a bit sweeter, deeper sound. It's a bit hard to hear from the recording. But yeah, it's nice to see it finished and, and everything's been properly restored. You can still see the sound post crack a little bit at the end. But a lot of the other work, you know, the new pieces that were fitted and things like that were actually done really well. But all in all, Masters of the Craft, well done. You have redeemed yourself. 
that original violin rest ancient violin restoration video to me well you can see my review i i really you know i was very hard about it very harsh oh he's got oh he's got a new tool he got the lee nielsen brand new out of the box because he never <laughs> used one before but as a violin maker and for people uh, watching I, I just wanted to make sure that people don't think that's how you do a proper violin restoration because you don't you, you know but but this this video clearly shows a professional at work uh, I think it's an English uh, I think they're English makers that are doing this restoration they've done a great job uh, the narrator has no idea what he's talking about <laughs> and he's just feeling filling the space you know maybe he should have interviewed the maker just that little bit more just to learn all the correct terms and things like that breathing life back into the violin but all in all a very interesting video um i i like to explain what i do just a little bit more but you know it's a, it gives people a good overview on a violin restoration well done masters of the craft and uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe, and get hit the little bell so you find out uh, when I post my next video. Uh, keep making beautiful music. Uh, you know, music, there's something very special about making music, and there's something really special about the sound of the string family. It's a very unique and special sound. You, you can express a lot of emotion, so I really love it. Um, yeah, keep making beautiful music and I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.